Welcome YouTube, welcome back to Sin City Living. For today's crap strategy, I wanna go over something that I call the loadout, or just the front load, the number load, however you wanna call it. It's based off of, regardless of whatever point is marked, it's based off of going across, include the point, like many of the crap strategies that, uh, that we cover, we don't worry about a pass line bed at all. Instead, we place the point. The reason we like to place the point is it gives us more control, especially over a longer roll. So with this strategy, what we're doing is we're picking a number or we're picking an area and we're gonna load that area up. We're gonna pull back every so often, we'll pull a little bit of money back. But for the most part, we're picking one area, be it the six and eight or the inside or even the outside, and we're just gonna load it up. Anything that hits, we're gonna stack it up in that particular area that we're going for or that particular number that we're going for. What we're trying to do is we're trying to use all of these numbers to load up one particular point for one big hit. This is an interesting strategy in that it's, it's, uh, it's not based on catching that 15, 30, 45, 60 hand roll, those, those rolls that, that go for for 15, 20, 45 minutes. Those are the roles that, with some of the other strategies we've gone over, you can make 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 dollars. This one is more based around kind of those mid rolls and a little bit of luck, but then again, every strategy is based off of a little bit of luck. If you go straight by the numbers, no, no strategy can actually win. So you're hoping to catch that little bit of luck. But what this one is doing is it's trying to catch, again, one number for one good hit. When I play the strategy, and I play this one fairly rarely, it's a fun strategy to play though. So I, I might play this one if I have a smaller buy-in, just a couple of hundred dollars, and I'm on a $5 table or a $10 table. And I will pick, for me, I will pick one number. Some people will pick a zone, the six and eight, or the five and nine, or the four and 10. I prefer to pick just one number. I will pick one number, and every time that particular number rolls, I'm gonna say bet. I'm gonna collect whatever I'm being paid. but. If any other number rolls, I'm just gonna stack up on my number. So for this one, let's pick the nine. So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna target the nine for this. So every time something rolls, and I'm actually gonna use some, some dice here, well, the nine, nine rolls. So since I picked the nine, five is going to pay $7, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and collect it. Now with five rolls. So five pays seven, and on this one, I'm going to say stack it up on the nine. Now I have a six roll. Six pays seven. I'm gonna throw in, as the player, I might throw in three dollars so I can collect 10. And I'm gonna say the same thing. Stack it up on the nine. Five rolls again. Five pays seven. Guess what? Stack it up on the nine. The nine now looks like 25. We have a nine that rolls. Now I'm gonna say same bet. Me personally, I might actually put this $10 on the nine, but same bet, I collect my 35, and I keep going. 11 rolls. Now another thing with this, this particular strategy, some people will do a field bet. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it depends. I might do it. So an eight. Eight rolls. Six pays seven. Now. Once I start getting into the green, what I may do is I may start pressing some of these individually just so I can have more to stack up onto the nine. So in this case, I might throw in five and say, go ahead and press my six and eight. That way now the six and eight are gonna give me a decent amount of, of chips to load up. So now the six rolls. I'm gonna throw in a dollar and get paid 15 for one because 12 pays 14. And guess what? I'm gonna stack it up. And look, the nine rolls. 40 pays 56. And I'm gonna say, same bet. Because the nine is the number that I have targeted. So, five rolls. Five pays seven. Now, I actually have some ones that I've won, so I'm gonna throw those in so that I can collect all red. Now I wanna press up the five, and I'll put the rest on the nine. A four roll, so it'd be a winner four. Now the four pays $9, and again, I'm probably gonna go ahead and try and get this up to a couple of units. So now this would come off, now these would be off, these numbers would be off, we would have a 10 roll, now everything is working again. 
and now the four rolls. So this is going to pay, depending on where you're at, it's either going to pay 18 or 19. I'm going to say it pays 18. So we'll throw $2 in for 20. Guess what? We're stacking it all up on the nine. Because again, the nine is the only number that I really want to collect anything off of. 10 pays 14. I'm going to throw in a dollar, get my 15, and I'm going to stack it up. Three, nothing happens. Now, oftentimes when I get to this point, instead of an $80 nine, I am personally probably going to do a $75 nine, and this is where I might start adding some some minor stuff to some of these other uh, some of these other numbers. So we'll we'll go ahead and let the five go to 15. Okay, and the seven rolls. So seven out. Started with 32 across. We have $91. Let's try this again. But we'll pick a different number. We'll pick a slightly easier one. Or not easier, but a slightly more common one. So we want to have a point marked. The nine is marked. Interesting number to have marked. And this time, I'm going to pretend I'm on a $10 table. So we're going to go ahead and do 54 across. Now this time, I'm going to pick the eight. I like the eight. It's my theoretical lucky number. So four rolls. That's going to pay $18. So that's going to pay $18. I'm going to tell them to stack it all up on the 8. We are already up to a $30 8. And look, the 8 rolls. I'm going to say same bet. Collect my 35. 12, nothing, unless I happen to have in the field, in which case I would use it to stack up. So now, oh, I'm sorry. I would have gone 64 across. I got ahead of myself. Unless I had a pass line bet, I would have done 64 across. So we have the winner nine that comes up. The winner nine, that would pay $14. Need to restock my ones here. My aces. That's going to pay $14. I'm going to take the eight to 42. Now once the eight hits 60 is where I'm likely to start pressing some of these others up a couple units each. We have a nine go again. So, 10. Again, this pays 18. And what did I say we're going to look for? We're going to try and go to 60. So now the eight is at $60. This is again, I just want one eight to hit. So, a six rolls. 12 is going to pay 14. We're going to go ahead and press that one up so the next time it pays, it's going to pay something nice. We have an 11, so unless I'm in the field with some money to stack up, and now the six rolls. What I would probably do here, just for ease, I want to try and get to the green. Says I'm going to take this to 30, and then I'm likely to go to 72 over here, and we'll collect. And seven out, so unfortunately I lost. Now I started with 64 across. I said 54, but I wasn't including the points. I started with 64 across. 49 bucks. So I lost $15 on that. But look at this. All I needed was to hit the eight one more time and I'd have pulled down $84. 84 bucks on the same bet plus what I already won. It's an interesting strategy. I'm not saying this is going to be a big money strategy. This is going to win huge amounts of money. This is a fun strategy. You're rooting for one particular point. And you can, you can play around with it like I do. Once I hit a certain point, like the $60 mark on a $10 table, the $30 mark on a $5 table, where I start pressing the other ones up once so that they can, they can start adding more as I funnel them into the eight or whatever other number I might choose. Um, and now I'm rooting for, you know, I'm rooting for the eight. I'm rooting for the eight. I want that eight to hit. And what some people will do as well is as they're collecting, they start place, They start using all that to place whatever the point is. And I have two points that you're, you're rooting for. I'm kind of in the middle, I'm kind of on the fence on that one. I, with this particular strategy, it's kind of a grinder strategy where you're, you're looking for a couple decent size hits and, and you're looking to collect here and there so that you can stay in the game longer. 
this is more of a strategy for if you're just hanging out having fun, you're having a good time, you want to stay on the tables, have some fun, be able to root for some numbers and have a good time. And with this strategy, you can play around. There's nothing wrong with throwing in the occasional field bet or even adding the field to your strategy. And there's also nothing wrong with maybe doing some hard ways or every so often you're just feeling it. So let's go for a three-way craft or a horn bet or something along those lines. But uh, for the most part, you're just looking for that one number. Uh, if, if I were to start placing the point, which we already have up here anyway, I would likely do it with maybe half of what I'm collecting. So I'm still collecting enough that, that I should be able to get a few more rolls in here and there. So let's try it again. Let's try it with a different number. One of the more fun ones, when it hits, one of the more, I shouldn't say fun, one of the more profitable ones when it hits, but not quite as fun because it doesn't hit as often. Let's go ahead and set a point. We'll set the nine. So now I'm going to do my 64 across, including the point. I'm going to designate the 10. We're going to funnel everything we get into the 10. Well, or we're just going to roll a 10 right away and we're going to do the same bet. Now, if I were to go off that strategy I was saying earlier, we'll go ahead and add five to, to our place bet over here. It's kind of silly because we're already up here. You could also do this where you only do 54 across and then you just start adding onto the placement over there. In fact, let's go ahead and set that up that way. So now we're placing it up that way. Okay, so six rolls. That is going to pay $14. 12 pays 14. And we press the 10. Ah, seven out rolls. Unfortunately, we lose. That's the, that's the problem with any strategy. All dice strategies are weak against the seven outs that come within the first three or four rolls, which statistically is going to happen a lot. One in six times those dice roll, it's going to be a seven. So you have one in six times of it occurring on the first roll, one in six times on the second roll, one in six times on the third roll. So odds are pretty good that a seven is going to come out pretty early, but all strategies are based on the seven not coming out. Sure, there's a few strategies such as the Dewey Don't that we will cover or the, the strategies where you have a don't come and then place all the rest of them. But all strategies are weak against the randomness of the dice. This one is just, a, to me, an enjoyable one if I wanted to sit around and play for a while. And there's, there's definitely a chance of hitting something good. So let's try this again. Let's do 54 across. the point and a five rolls. So we're going to do the 10 again. Pays 14. We're going to stack up the 10 and we'll collect right there. And a six. Pays 14. We're going to throw in a dollar to get 15. We're going to stack up the 10. Which is now a buy. Three rolls, nothing happens unless I happen to be in the field. Ooh, another six. It's going to pay 14. We're going to throw in another dollar. It's going to pay 15. We're going to add it to our stack. And now this is the point where we're, we want that 10 to hit. And we're likely to push some of these, to press some of these other numbers up a little bit higher if they roll. So the 10 rolls, there we go. So that has a $2 VIG, it has a $2 VIG, but we get paid a hundred bucks. We're gonna do it this way. We're gonna pay it with green so that after it pays, we go ahead and change how we're placing the point. A lot of people like to do this where they, they, they put some of their winnings on a place in the point so they can also, so they can root for the winner that the rest of the table is rooting for. Gets you a little more buy-in into the game and seven out. So think of this, if we had not been placing the point, we'd have collected over $100. Over $100 on a 64 across bet. Uh, so we would have not won huge money, we really wouldn't have won all that much money to begin with, but it would have gotten us another roll, maybe two more rolls out of that. Out of, out of our winnings. So again, this is an interesting strategy just to have some fun because you're really rooting for that 10 and when you, when you get these stacked up, I've actually seen someone play a method similar to this where we got the 10 all the way up to, I want to say $135 um, within just a few minutes because uh, all the rest of the numbers were rolling. 
And uh, when that happens, it's, it's fun. That's when you see players cheering and screaming and yelling because they got a bunch of mini bets and they got one bet that is just the one that they want to hit. It makes the game more fun. Um, you, you've got something you really bought in for, rooting for. I like placing the point as well because you can, you can now root for the same things all the rest of the table is rooting for and it gets you a little bit more camaraderie with everybody else. But, uh, but that's my... Uh, that's my stack everything on one number method, the funnel method, the stack method, whatever you want to call it. I've seen it called a number of things, the tower method. Um, although there's a variation on that that I've seen as well, where you take everything down and put it on your chosen number after a certain point. Um, but there you go. That's, that's a fun method. It's a fun strategy and one that you can use all the time. Thank you for watching YouTube. Be sure you hit the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you later.